Whether you play Fortnite, Roblox, Call of Duty, Angry Birds, or even just a simple word search on your phone, gaming is all around us, just in different forms and styles, and you have the hardcore gaming as well as just the regular occasional gaming. I am more on the hardcore side of gaming, and I also fall on the casual side as well. I think it depends on the day, depends on the game. Sometimes I can go hard on Call of Duty, sometimes I can go hard on Minecraft, but then sometimes I could also go hard on, or go more casual on Minecraft or Call of Duty and just hang out and vibe. My question is though, is gaming good or bad for society? In this video, I will talk about my side of gaming, how it's affected me, and a few other things. So sit tight, grab some popcorn, and enjoy. Hello, my name is Jordan, always known as Jip in the online world of gaming. I am a gamer from Minnesota in the United States, and I've been gaming for about two decades now, and I want to say gaming has had a such a big effect on me as a person and has become a big part of my personality over the last 10 years. Ever since I got my first Xbox 360, I've been fascinated with gaming and everything it has to offer. Whether it is a new indie or AAA game, all the way to the way a computer works. It really helped me learn many things about myself as well as helped me find my true self in a way. But before all that, let's take a dive back and talk about how I was introduced to gaming when I was quite young. I vaguely remember playing, I believe it was Goof Troop, with my mom on Super Nintendo. That was precisely my first real inter interaction with gaming. My family then got a PS2 later on, which only accelerated my gaming curiosity. I played all sorts of games, GTA San Andreas, NCAA football, motorcycle racing, to countless others. My family had quite the collection of games for the PlayStation 2, and I remember when we got Throwville, the amusement park tycoon game, my brothers and I would stay up all night playing it, but then cover out the PlayStation 2 light and turn off TV when one of my parents would come down to check on us if we were asleep. We also only had very few memory cards, so turning it off would have meant we lost a lot of progress potentially, so we'd leave it on you know, all day or all night so we wouldn't lose that progress. We spent countless hours playing our PlayStation 2 with my brother, and it was a true blast. Around 6th grade, maybe 5th grade even, uh, my friend on the basketball team that I played with, he had an Xbox 360. Now, I had never had or played on one, or really even heard of one prior, because I mainly was someone who played a lot outdoors, and I lived out in the country, and I hung out with friends. Along with that, I played soccer, baseball, and basketball, and it was just I was just busy in a way, I guess. So I didn't have time for gaming aside from the PS2 we already had. This friend, though, I went to his apartment. I vividly remember this night. We played Call of Duty World at War and stayed up pretty late doing so. We tried talking to people in the lobbies, making friends. That was, and this was my first interaction with Xbox Live. This was a night, this night was so much fun because it was just a glimpse of what Xbox Live could be in my world. A few years later, I started getting more of an idea of Xbox Live because my friends had it. On the weekends, we would hang out at their houses and play them out for two for hours, sometimes staying up till 4 or 5 a.m., which was a big deal at the time because we were middle schoolers and we thought it was hard to even stay up just till 2 a.m. I remember asking for an Xbox for one year for Christmas, but instead, I got a Nintendo. DS, which was okay because it gave me something to do when I was at so on soccer rides or like road trips because I played on a traveling soccer team or when we were at a basketball tournament. But the DS wasn't for me. I remember a year after that, I got my uh, first Xbox 360. I did not, however, get live. So it was kind of just something to do here or there. When Black Ops 1 came out though, I ended up getting live and it changed so much for me in my gaming world. I started playing Black Ops 1 online and meeting new people and from, you know, from around the world, around the country. And I was just so invested in playing online that it soon became my main hobby after 8th grade when I moved because the friend group I became a part of in high school was also a bunch of people who played Xbox, so I played it even more with the release of new CODs and other games with them. I knew I wanted more though. I knew I wanted to experience more and see more of what's out there in the gaming world, so I started watching live streams on Twitch, on Beam and Mixer, as well as YouTube videos from Jev and Mark Music, for example. I then got the interest in make, starting my own channel and making my own content. I've now made my own content for around 10 years and it's been a ride. The journey of making content and playing so many games is what inspired this video. I used to think I gamed all the time because it's just a fun pastime and hobby. I realized that it's more than that. Nowadays, you have many types of gamers. Some are super hardcore and pre play every day nonstop, and some just play when they get 30 minutes after they put their kid down for bed and decide to play a bit before they go to bed themselves. I am somewhat in the middle of those two types of gamers. I love playing for NS hours, but I also have sometimes where I only hop on when I have some free time and feel like playing a bit. You see, gaming for me, in my opinion, has become an escape. It has become this whole new world I go to when I just want to get away and relax and have fun with some strangers. Gaming can be bad for you if it's all you do and so on, but as long as you know when, you have been, when you've when you done too much of it and you are able to go outside and touch some grass, for instance. Uh, but overall, it's an escape from reality. It's an escape from all the stresses of the real world and anything else, really. You can meet so many new people just by joining a random stream on Twitch and chatting for a bit, assuming the person doesn't have more than like 100 viewers and chat isn't moving 100 miles per hour. Along with these streamers you can talk to, they have the communities for you to join and meet many more people in that community. You can create close friendships 
with these people and from those communities you know you see how crazy it is to meet people from all around the country or world i have friends in japan i have friends in europe i have friends all over the u.s you know it's crazy where i have friends it really is absolutely crazy one of my current closest friends lives halfway across the country in washington if it wasn't for gaming i would have never met him most likely he currently streams though a lot more than me and his stream started out as an escape for me when i where i went to goof around and have fun and now i'm in vc with and discord with him every night it's just crazy how much someone can have an effect on you from so far away i think there are some stigmas around gaming and gamers in general they're kind of unnecessary and not really needed i know that in recent years people have been saying gaming causes violence and causes people to act out and so on i'm a firm believer that gaming does not do this at all i think if anything gaming helps people in a more therapeutic way let me explain usually when i am like upset when i'm upset or mad at something i do not lash out i simply go play a game that relaxes me such as minecraft sometimes if i want to blow up some steam i go do a bunch of stuff on gta 5. long story short gaming is what i tend to do as an outlet for many things it helps me escape any current issues and forget about them for however long i decide to play for when i was heavily depressed a couple years ago i simply sunk a ton of time into content creation and gaming it was one of my light it was one of the lights in my dark time it was a great way for me to meet new people and just you know relax and just kind of escape and not think about what's going on in my life it's a great way for people to unwind and just you know relax and be themselves i think violence goes down to a psychological level that needs therapy or something again this is my opinion not facts it is just what i think regarding this. or gamers can be anyone from anywhere it could be a 10 year old who just won a championship game in soccer all the way to a grandma playing skyrim live on twitch yes there's a grandma that does this i have even seen a clip where a mother was playing fortnite in the hospital after giving birth i think people believe gamers are to be lazy because it is an activity in which you just sit there and do quote unquote nothing in a sense depending on the game you play you are learning or forming new skills whether it's gaining knowledge from a steam game like pc building simulator or improving reaction skills and timing on cod or aim labs there are many different worlds out there and so many different things to try and learn i so i think gamers are far from lazy because they're constantly learning and using their brain to do different challenges of objectives and games let's look at some different factual stuff around gaming in a sense you know i just want to throw this in there just kind of you know, throw it in there and some factual stuff so there are over 2.7 billion gamers worldwide across various platforms including pc console and mobile devices which is absolutely insane honestly but there's 7 billion people in the world guys we need to amp those numbers up it's not even half the population esports or competitive gaming has grown into a billion dollar industry with professional players teams and tournaments drawing massive audiences both online and stage which is actually insane you know you can actually make a career out of gaming if you actually are good enough or if you actually want to take it that serious you can actually make a career whether it be esports or it be youtube or it be streaming you know on twitch you know there's a lot of different ways you can do it the gaming industry has steadily been steadily growing with revenue surpassing that of the movie and music industries combined in 2021 global gaming revenue was estimated to be around 175 billion dollars which is absolutely nuts that's crazy to think about absolutely crazy to think about in my opinion it's crazy how much has happened in the last just five years for gaming and stuff like that. Mobile gaming has seen exponential growth with over 2.5 billion mobile gamers globally. This segment include or continues to expand rapidly due to the widespread availability of smartphones and, tab smartphones and tablets. Now, I don't really play on my smartphone a whole lot gaming wise because I can't I can never find a good game to play. I don't know. I'm just, I think it's because I'm a PC gamer, so no game on mobile will really suffice. It just, it just, it sucks, and I hate it. I recently tried the House of Da Vinci. I could not get into it one bit. It's just, it's, it's hard for me. It's just really hard for me. I don't know. Gaming has become a significant social activity, with many gamers forming friendships and communities through online multiplayer games and game forums, which I was talking about. You know, you meet so many new people, you or you can meet so many people. But there's single player games that where you don't meet people. Don't get me wrong, but aside from that, you still can, you still have the opportunity to meet many new people in communities whether it be on a forum like tech game i'm on the tech game a lot uh, or whether it be in communities on street on twitch you know stuff like that or even just you know networking with people on youtube and other gamers and finding those friend groups and stuff like that the average age of gamers is increasing with the majority falling between 18 and 35 however there is also a significant portion of older adults engaging in gaming with the average age of gamers continuing to rise i think this is because the right now the people that are all like you know getting like 
me, get into my, that I'm in my adulthood, you know, I'm 27. And basically now I'm an older quote unquote gamer because, and I will be because I grew up with gaming and now it's so much. And now that like people are, the people that grew up with when gaming was really getting introduced, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox 360 everything, that was when they were in middle school, elementary school and high school and stuff like that. So when they first started gaming and now they're just kind of like used to it and it's just become a huge hobby. And now gaming is a big hobby for middle schoolers. But I think the reason why it's getting older is because of that. And also with the release of many different styles of games and stuff like that, that also definitely helps I feel like too as well. Indie game development has surged in popularity with small teams or even individual developers creating unique and innovative gaming experiences. Platforms like Steam and indie friendly consoles have provided avenues for these games to reach a wide audience. Let's talk about Power World for a second. Power World was an indie game in a sense. It wasn't, people, it's, it's getting a lot of shit for knock, or knocking off uh, what Pokemon. Power World honestly is pretty much what Pokemon gamers wanted, but Pokemon or Nintendo never provided. So in reality, it's just a really good game that was meant to come about. Just it doesn't matter who did it. Now they're an indie, it's Pocket Pair, I believe, I believe it's from Pocket Pair. And they're an indie game developer. Uh, I think they have a max of 40 employees and the game was budgeted for 6.7 million US dollars. I think it was, or I think it was a billion yen, but it ended up, it ended up now has been, it's like profited like $216 million. <laughs> I don't know how much that is in yen, but that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy to me. Educators are increasingly using gaming as a tool for teaching and learning. Educational games can make learning more engaging and interactive, catering to different styles of learning, allowing personalized instruction. I know that this is true because I've seen clips of uh, teachers using Minecraft even. You know, there's a, one of, you know, they used Redstone to kind of like, I think it was like a puzzle. They wanted them to create a uh, machine that did something and they used Redstone or whatever. And it's just, it's kind of cool to see that. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of cool. I remember playing Oregon Trail in uh, middle school, you know, in seventh grade or whatever. I remember that. And it was a lot of fun. You know, whether little Susie died and you had to spend either two days burying her and having a funeral, but then you somewhat, but then you lose two days and you use up X amount of food, or you had to throw her away and you save a day. You know, it's just, you know, throw her off the side and save a day. You know, it's just kind of like a, I mean, I remember that game was, <laughs> I don't know, that game was risky. It was a weird game to play. I'm not going to lie. Gamers and gaming communities often engage in philanthropic philanthropic efforts raising money for charitable causes through events like gaming marathons, charity streams, and in-game fundraisers. These initiatives demonstrate the altru altruistic, is that what that word is? Altruistic potential of gaming and its ability to bring people together for a common good. Now, I know that people may flame me for this, but I have um, every year uh, for Call of Duty, I am stuck in the trap of getting Call of Duty every year, I won't lie. And I usually get the endowment pack in every Call of Duty. So support the troops, I will do that. Whether it actually supports them or not, I don't know. Also, I'm very thankful for the sacrifices made from our military and everything like that for us to be able to have the freedom that we have this day. You know, people take it for granted. It's just crazy how much people take our freedom for granted. It really is. The future of gaming is unclear, but it's also clear at the same time. With the rise of VR and AR gaming, these are forever reshaping and creating all new types of experiences for gamers and for future generations to come. I personally think gaming will just keep growing and will be something in society no matter what happens. Considering we can easily go on our phone casually and download Angry Birds or Monopoly, realistically, anyone can be considered a gamer. There are even word search games, puzzle games, and many, many more options out there for any person, really. It's just become such a popular and common thing for people to do on their phone in their free time. It's even just a common thing now that I feel like having a console in your home. It's just, it's consoles have also become a multi entertainment system for you to game on or even just watch YouTube or TV. Like this video, you could be watching this on your console while you are doing the dishes or just hanging out. The future for gaming is bright, and with technology advancing, I am in awe of graphics now. I can't imagine where they be, where they will be in just like a few years from now. I think it will always be something for families to get brought together, or for people to be brought together as well. Whether it's a group of friends getting together, or it's meeting around the globe, meeting people around the globe. I remember in high school, my friends would all come over. Like I said, they would all come over with their own Xbox and TV, and we would all set up, set up in different rooms and playing a party while all hanging out at the same time. It was truly amazing, and it is truly is amazing to see what gaming has become in a sense. Overall, gaming has changed us all in ways we don't even notice or have noticed and that's okay it has helped many people in hard times such as myself it's helped me find such amazing friends who have supported me through such so much regarding my cron my content my Crohn's disease as well as my depression you never know who you will run into in the gaming world I think it is ultimately one of the best parts I think that's ultimately one of the best parts of gaming you can just have fun be yourself and meet so many like-minded people or you can play single-player games and just enjoy the amazing story line from a whole range of different types of narratives there's also the aspect of streaming content creation around gaming as 
as well, such as this video or the rest of my videos on my channel. I think content creations around, around gaming is unique because you can come up with so many different ways and challenges to play a game when it comes to streaming or making videos. You can even have your own community chime in on different challenges for your videos or streams. No matter what kind of gamer you are, what you play on, or what you play, we are all a gamer in some way, shape, or form. I hope you enjoyed. This is Jip and I'm out. Peace.